Google just dropped a brand new product called Opal. If you ever wanted to turn your AI ideas into real working apps without writing or even seeing a single line of code, you are going to love this. In this video, I'm going to explain what Opal is and then get into the tool and build a few AI apps to show you how it really works. So what is Opal? Opal is a new experimental tool from Google Labs that lets you build and share powerful AI mini apps that basically chain together prompts, models, and tools, all using single natural language and visual editing. The way it works under the hood is pretty cool. In most of the AI ideas, we may need to work with different kinds of models for image processing, for video generating, for music, for audio. Then we may also need to do multiple API calls. We may want to call external calls and things start to get very complicated. And this is where Opal is doing things very differently. In this case, you are simply having a conversation with Opal and it stitches the logic for you. All right, now we are inside Opal. The first thing that you see is if you have already created some apps, it will be stored for you. So think of it like an app library that you're building. And what they've also done is they've already created a lot of these existing apps for us to get a head start. For example, this one is something which I really like, which is turning your YouTube videos into quiz to help you learn. I think we all can relate to this where we are looking at a lot of different YouTube videos like the one which you're looking at right now and you want to learn it and the way you can check it is by creating a quiz. So let's create our own mini app. The scenario that I'm thinking is I have a YouTube video and based on the video I want to create an article and then also I want to create like a eight second trailer video based on my long form content. Okay so Let's see if we are able to do this just by writing a single prompt. So you are inside and then you click on create new and that's where it takes this beautiful interface and then you can describe what you really want. So you can do it step by step or you can describe it completely and let it run for you. So I'm going to describe it here, take a YouTube URL and then based on that video, write a detailed SEO friendly blog post and then second, using that key moment from the video, generate a script for an eight second video trailer that uses some background music which is ready for social media. So I'm going to run this, but you can already see that it is not a straightforward request. It needs to first understand the video. That means it needs to transcribe and all of that. Second, it needs to then create based on that transcription an article, which should be SEO friendly. And then third, it needs to also create a trailer video, which is a video generation capability, right? So if you were to do this, we would be tying like multiple different models together. And that is exactly what Opal does for you. So you can see it has already done that while I was speaking incredibly fast. The first thing which it is doing is it is generating the blog post and you can see that it actually gives you everything which is under the hood, right? So I'm seeing that, okay, it's using this particular model. I can change it to pro, which also has a reasoning capability. And it says that you're an expert content analyst and an SEO specialist, you go through the URL, go through the theme and all of these things. And then you are also able to generate a trailer script, which is based on this particular video. And then this goes inside this and you're, you're able to generate like a video. So this is where it is using the Veo model. And then now you're, you're packaging everything together, right? So it's pretty cool. So let's see if it is able to do it. So I can actually like come on the app so that it allows you to see everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my own videos, which is this one in, in this, this video. video I'll... So I'm going to take this and then go back here. I'm going to say start and then this is where I'm, I'm going to enter the YouTube URL and then let's see what is happening under the hood, right? So it has taken this and it's kind of generating the blog post. So it has taken this particular one. It is now generating the blog post. You can already see that it is calling the 2.5 Pro to do that. So everything is kind of real time, right? So th this is where you see the u user experience and this is where you see thought of the so-called developer experience because I'm saying so-called because there's no real development interface. It is all really business UI here. So since we use the 2.5 Pro model, it's going to take a little bit more time because it's, it's thinking as well. So you can also see that in which, which step it is. So now it has gone to the next one. You can see the beautiful animation here. So it is calling 2.5 Pro. It has already generated. It is generating the trailer script, as you can see with the animation. And it is now calling the 2.5 Flash preview, which is which is also what is represented through this animation. So pretty neat. And now it is it is pushing it here and now it is generating the trailer video. So the user is going to just get the final output. So if, if I were on the user side of the house, I'm going to see this. But on the editor side, I can, actually I can see exactly what is happening 
So this now they are at this particular step, which is generating the trailer, trailer script and the video. All right, we are at the last stage where it is trying to package the content for display. And there you go. So let's look into the app. So this is where in the video I talked about Notebook LM and this is what I said. I talked about all these things. So it's pretty neat and it has sort of created like a trailer as well. So I asked it to generate trailer with the music. So it has done a fantastic job, right? With just like one prompt. Let's build a mini app, which could be very interesting. So here, what I'm going to say is I want it to build an app that creates a bedtime story for, for kids, right? So it could use three types of input. It could have a child's name, their favorite animal and a magical place. And then the app must generate a, like a three paragraph gentle and positive story featuring all these elements. You know, to finish this, it should create like one beautiful story block, storybook illustration, right? So let's do this. And what, what it should do is it should now have a built in user interaction. So based on what I am saying, it, it should kind of use that as an input and should be able to generate the output. There you go. So it has done a fantastic job. At least visually, it looks like that. So as I asked, it, it has taken three inputs, child name, favorite animal, magical place, and then it is it is ready to kind of generate the story. So let's look at this together. So let's say that, okay, I'm going into the app straight. Okay, enter the child's name. I'm going to say Shania. Enter the favorite animal. I know Shania's favorite animal is a bunny. And magical place, let's say that Elsa's snow forest the queen elsa from disney let's see what it comes back with so the idea is to make it very personalized for shania so it's doing that it's also generating an audio narration which is pretty cool so in the steps we have taken the input it's generating it has generated the bedtime story generated the prompt generate the audio narration and then generate the story illustration so you can see that it has gone ahead and created all of these things and there you go right so now we have a story here, once upon a time, it lived a sweet girl named Shania every night before snuggling into bed. So you can see there's already a story and it has generated this. Once upon a time in a cozy little house, lived a sweet girl named Shania. Every night before snuggling into bed, she loved to cuddle with her soft, fluffy toy bunny, Pip. Okay, this is fantastic. I'm sure Shania will be very happy. Now, what I also want to do is I want to add some more features. So let's say that I also want to add a picture from the user and make it part of the story. Let's see if it is able to do that. So what I want is I want to add an input, which is where it should ask for a picture from the user and somehow make it a part of the story. So I'm on purpose giving it a vague kind of a prompt. Let's see if it gets it. Okay. So I think it, it definitely got it. So you can see that it has now like asking to upload upload the picture so let's go back in the app refresh it and then see what happens so enter the child's name i'm going to say shania favorite animal bunny favorite magical place elsa's snow forest and then upload a picture so let's see if i'm uploading a picture and see if it includes that Okay, so now if you go back to the editor, you can actually see step by step what is actually happening. And you can also see how the, these things are kind of interacting the in app itself. So generating image prompt, generating story illustration. So th these are these are the different steps that is taking taking place. And now it's generating the audio narration, etc. Right. So what will be interesting is to see how it also takes the image that I've imported as part of the input. Okay. So this is the image and you can see that there is a bunny based on the image that I've imported. So it's pretty cool. Okay. All right. So let's see Shania's magical adventure. So this was the original image and the image over here, right? So it's pretty close. And then you can once upon a time in a field filled with tall golden sunflowers that stretched towards the warm sun lived a sweet girl named Shania. She loved to imagine grand adventure. So what is so cool about this is based on the image that I actually imported, it changed the story, it inserted the bunny and it kind of did something wonderful, right? So yeah, I mean, this is something cool. I'm sure you guys are going to enjoy it, experimenting with this. There are a lot of templates which are already available. 
So please go experiment. Let me know on your comments if you created something really, really cool and would like to collaborate. Thank you once again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.